Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. The parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks for the reading of your word. We pray that as we look to your word, you will speak to us this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to begin by asking us this question. How do we prepare for something that is extremely important? How do we get ready for an event that would be the most important event of our lives? I remember getting ready to sit for my SPM examination. For me, at that point of time in my life, 17 years old, SPM was the most important thing that was going to happen at that point of time, according to my mother. So I remember doing all the preparations that was needed for the exam. And on the night before the first paper, normally the first two papers is the BM language paper. BM language paper. And I, was, I remember getting ready for it. So the teachers in school will repeatedly give us reminders to students. And one of the things that they would remind us is that they would, they would tell us, if you are staying in a flood-prone area, if you are staying in a flood-prone area and if it starts to rain for more than a few hours, pack your things and move out and go and stay somewhere else. Where? Don't know. But move out. Okay, you don't want to be hindered from coming to school. The one other thing that they would also always tell us is that we must not forget to bring our entrance slip. Each student is given this entrance slip, and without this entrance slip, we cannot go into the examination hall. So we are to guard this entrance slip with all our life. Guard it. But you see, I was very familiar with this entrance slip concept because I sat for UPSR. I, was, I had an entrance slip then. I had PMR. I also had an entrance slip at the time. So SPM, yeah, it's the same thing. I must, I must remember to keep the entrance slip. So I was very familiar with, with that. So the night before the first day of SPM, I was packing my bag. I was making sure that all my pen had ink. You know, that's why we'll make sure right, all is writing and we'll make sure all my pencils are sharpened. And this entrance slip, I put it into the file and put it into my bag. I checked it a number of times before I went to bed. It was there. In the morning, I checked it again. It was there. In the car, on the way to school, I checked it again. It was there. And so I was very confident that I was ready with all these things, lah, huh? things that I need. Whether I'm ready for the exam or not is a different question. But all these things, I had it. 
So I was lining up, it was time to line up to go into the examination hall. I looked ahead to the girl, to my friend who was standing in front of me. And I saw that her entrance slip looked very different from the one that I was holding in my hand. I quickly turned to the girl who was behind me. Her entrance slip also looked very different from what I had in my hand and my friend at that moment when, yo, that is not the entrance slip. My mind just went blank. Now you're wondering what I'm holding in the hand, right? I checked so many times. I was holding the receipt that I paid for the exam. That SPM, they give you a receipt after you pay for exam fee. That receipt, I was holding that receipt. And so my friend told me, you know, go to the principal's office and get a temporary slip. Anxiety and distress became my instant companion at that time. And I ran as fast as I could. At that time, I could run. You know, I reached the principal's office. I saw that there were other girls there before me. And I thought, oh, I'm not alone. Anyway, I managed to get the temporary slip and I raced back to the exam hall. All my classmates were already in the hall. I was the last one to enter, and I sat down drenched in sweat, and I remember thanking God that I was allowed in. You know, friends, getting ready is something very familiar for each one of us. We get ready for exams, we get ready for job interviews, we get ready for meetings, we get ready before we travel, you know, we remember, make sure we have our passport and we make sure we have our visas. You know, when we have important events of our lives, we get ready for it and we make sure that we have all that we need for whatever event that we were getting ready for. The coming again of Jesus is, I believe, the most important event that will happen in our lives. In fact, it is one of Jesus' promises. Jesus promised his disciples that he will come back. We see that in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, Jesus would tell his disciples that he would be leaving them. So you, you will find that he will tell them, you know, uh, that he's going back to the Father, uh, don't let your hearts be troubled, trust in God, trust also in Jesus. And then he would also tell them that he would be coming back. We see that in John 14 verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So the coming again of Jesus is something that we believers, we anticipate. It is an event that we look forward to with much hope in our hearts. And therefore, we need to be ready for him. We need to be ready when Jesus comes. Jesus is sure to come again. There is no doubt about it, but when? Do you know when? Please don't answer the question because we don't know. We don't know when Jesus is coming again. But we do know, we do know that he would come at an hour when we do not expect him. I repeat, we don't know when the Son of Man will come, but we do know that he would come at an hour when we do not expect him. Matthew chapter 24, the chapter before this, tells us that. Matthew 24, verses 42 to 44. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. 
our Lord Jesus is sure to come back and he will come back at an hour when we do not expect him. The text that we are looking at today is taken from Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. Jesus here speaks this parable, the parable of the ten virgins, to teach his disciples the importance of readiness in light of the unknown time of the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is teaching us the importance, the importance of readiness in light of the unknown time of his coming again. So Jesus uses this imagery of a Jewish wedding to bring his message or his lesson across. So a Jewish wedding is something that the disciples understood. It was something that the disciples were familiar with. It was a custom that they are familiar with. And following a typical Jewish marriage custom, the groom will leave his house, his parents' house, with a contingent of friends, and they will make their way to the bride's home. And at the bride's home, it is where the marriage will take place. And after that, the entire wedding party will then make their way to the wedding banquet, which is usually at the bridegroom's place, and it's usually at night. So the bride here would have her bridesmaids in attendance, not to help her, but their role was to serve the bridegroom. And as he approaches, they are to light his way into the house. So that's why they are carrying lambs with them, you know, to light their way, his way, all right, into the home. So that's how the parable pictures it. So if you look at verses 1 to 4, Matthew 25 verses 1 to 4. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lambs and ran out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lambs but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lambs. The parable begins here with the ten virgins going out to meet the bridegroom. They knew the bridegroom was coming. It was not a new piece of information. It was not something that they were just, just told about. They knew the bridegroom will come and they knew that as bridesmaids in the Jewish wedding, their role was to light the way for the groom. They knew all of that and that is why they went out to wait for him. They went out carrying lambs in their hands to meet with the bridegroom. Just like us who believe in Jesus, we know our Lord Jesus is coming again. We know that we will meet him when he returns. It is not a new piece of information. We read it repeatedly in scripture that Jesus would come again. But are we ready for him? Now, when I say, are we ready, I don't mean salvation. Our salvation is given to us as a gift from God. Jesus paid the ransom for each one of us, and it is through Jesus that we are saved. It is through Jesus that our sins are forgiven, and it is through him, Jesus, that we are reconciled back to God. There is nothing we can do in our capacity to gain salvation. We don't work for salvation. Salvation works for us in that sense. Salvation is given to us as a gift when we place our faith in Jesus. So the question is not about salvation, but rather how is our faith in Jesus doing? Salvation has opened the way for us to be reconciled back to God correct? Right? Yes? How is our relationship with God doing? Are we going strong in our relationship with God? Or are we going so-so? You see, friends, there can only be two stages in our, in our walk with God or in our spiritual life. We can either be progressing, progressing 
in our spiritual life, or we may face the tendency to regress in our spiritual life. So progression or regression is either this or that. There is no so-so. There is no in, in the middle. So if we say that, you know, if, I, if, I, if, we ask, if people ask us, you know, how is your walk with God? We say, okay, la, there, there, la, there, la. okay. La. When we say that, what we actually are experiencing is we are actually regressing. It's just that we are not aware of it. It's very subtle. We are not aware of it. So we need our walk with God to be robust. We need our faith to be growing. You see, the ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. All ten of them had lambs in their hands. All ten had. But only five could keep the lamb let it until the end. Only five had enough oil to keep the lamb, their lamb let it until the bridegroom arrives. Matthew 25, verses 5 to 9. The bridegroom was, long, was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lambs. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give me some of your oil. Our lambs are going out. No, they replied. They may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. You see, friends, each of these bridesmaids were to be responsible for the lamb that was in their hands. It was their responsibility to keep their own lamb burning. They needed to do all that they can to keep it lighted until the bridegroom comes. Likewise, my dear friends, our relationship with God is really our responsibility. We need to walk our own journey with God. No one else can walk for us. The community, or us, the church, the community would be there to spur us on. Our family and friends would be there to encourage us in our walk with God. But we need to do the walking. We cannot piggyback on them. You know what piggyback? Jump onto their shoulders. Cannot. We cannot do that. We need to be responsible for our own faith journey. Just like how the five wise virgins were responsible enough to carry extra oil to keep their lamp burning, we need to do all that we can to keep our faith burning as well. Now, how can we keep our faith burning going? We keep our faith burning by constantly bringing ourselves to God. We need to make it a spiritual practice whereby, whereby we daily and const constantly confess our sins and repent. We need to do that so that when He comes, which we don't know when He's coming, when He comes, we might not be caught feeling ashamed of ourselves. You see, when we make it a point to confess our sins, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. God's forgiveness comes to us. We are cleansed. And I'd like us to look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. It says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that leads to death, so that we may serve the living God? Cleanse our conscience. God's, Jesus' blood has the ability to cleanse us completely and deeply. You cannot go any deeper already. Complete. So when we make it a spiritual practice to confess our sins, to come before him, his, his forgiveness flows into our lives and when he appears, when he comes, we will not be caught feeling ashamed because God has cleansed us. 
It's our spiritual practice. Every day we do that. So we are ready. We shall be ready when our lives are cleansed by the blood of Jesus and we are no longer ashamed when he comes again. We keep our faith burning by making sure that we spend time in the presence of God. We keep our faith burning by growing in our knowledge of God. We keep our faith burning by being doers of God's word. You know, one of the many things that God instructs us, one, one is forgiveness, correct? Forgiveness. God calls us to forgive, and if today you have or had someone in your life that you are finding it hard to forgive, you may want to ask the Lord for his strength and grace to forgive that person. You see, we shall be ready when our relationship with God and one another is where it should be. Moving on, the parable ends with a warning and an instruction. Matthew 25, verses 10 to 13. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Wow. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. In these verses, we see a warning. The five foolish virgins who returned were not allowed in to enjoy the wedding banquet. No appeal could change that reality. And that is a warning to us. And therefore, the parable ends with this final sentence, which says, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. You know, friends, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to be ready for his coming again. The fact that Jesus is our Lord, the fact that Jesus has given us this gift of salvation, the fact that Jesus has given us his own life should motivate us to be responsible to prepare well so that when the time comes, we will be ready to meet him. And I would like to end with this story. And this story was written on Queen Victoria. When Queen Victoria was a child, she didn't know she was in line for the throne of da of England. I wanted to say David. Okay, to the throne of England. Her instructors, trying to prepare her for the future, were frustrated because they couldn't motivate her. She just didn't take her studies seriously. And finally, the, her teachers decided to tell her, to tell her that one day she would become the Queen of England. And upon hearing this, Victoria quietly said, then I'll be good. You see, my dear friends, the realization that she had inherited this high calling gave her a sense of responsibility that profoundly affected her conduct from then on. Likewise, we who have become children of God through all that Jesus had done for us on the cross should also profoundly affect the way we live our lives. We must live our lives being ready for the coming of the Lord. We are in this Advent season, and I pray that we will take time to ask ourselves this hard question. Are we ready to meet with the Lord should he return at any time? Are we ready to meet with the Lord should he return at any time? I will just allow us to have a few moments of quiet reflection 
you know, as you prepare your hearts to come to the Lord's table, I hope that you can use this question to help us to reflect, are we ready to meet the Lord, to meet with the Lord when he should return at any time? Let us take some moment to be quiet. Father Almighty, we thank you for your word that calls us to be ready for the coming of Jesus again. We pray, Father, that you will give us the grace that we need so that we can make preparations to be ready for your coming. And as we come to your table this morning, Father, we pray that your grace will be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.